Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Media Cafe Online and Vance M. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. As we get closer to the Cybertruck launch event, I'm pretty sure they will start slowly rolling out new wraps and hopefully some Cybertruck accessories. We know they have their own in-house team working on specific accessories for this vehicle. And unless they don't want to complicate early production, which is definitely a possibility, if Tesla was smart, that's what they would do. Slow Slowly start showing the public what type of accessories they've been working on. And while many of us were excited to finally see the matte black Cybertruck, which was most likely a color PPF wrap, the search volume on Google still does not compare to when Elon went on the Joe Rogan podcast. So here we have it, X's new AI platform called Grok or Grok, whatever you prefer, to possibly be integrated natively in Tesla vehicles using local compute in the future and Tesla vehicles to run inference for Grok queries when the robotaxi fleet is not in use driving people around. I think the Tesla community can tend to get over their skis when it comes to quasi announcements like this. So is this a future billion dollar business for Tesla or is it something that may not actually ever happen at all? Rather than cop out with the answer being somewhere in between, which by the way, it most likely will be, here are a few things to consider. Internalize the first line here provided our vehicle AI computer is able to run the model. For now, there are no guarantees Tesla's FSD hardware will be capable enough to run Grok. Which then begs the question, would it only be cars with hardware 4 that may be able to run Grok? What about hardware 2.5? Questions abound here in terms of what percentage of Tesla's fleet might be able to do this in the future. So sadly, I'm going to sound a little bit like Wall Street here, but it's actually very tough, if not impossible, to put numbers on this right now. It's just far too soon. When Elon says Tesla will probably have the most amount of usable inference compute on Earth, Bear in mind, using FSD hardware when the cars are sitting idle will indeed use some level of energy. How would a Tesla owner be compensated for letting Tesla remotely run inference compute on Tesla vehicles? This would certainly result in an accelerated type of phantom drain, only this time there would be some type of return to the customer for this energy use. And there are more questions. How much energy would running inference require? Would the energy drain be worth the presumably small amount of compensation that Tesla or X would end up offering to the customer, the customer being the owner of the Tesla vehicle. To make sure everybody's up to speed, inference compute is basically the process of answering questions that people would ask AI like Grok. It's the process of making predictions or decisions based on data. This is entirely different than training an entire model. So think about simple questions like, what's the most popular restaurant in Austin, Texas? Tesla cars may in the future be able to use the FSD computer to spit out an answer to a query like this, and of course, many others. SETI, S-E-T-I, is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and Elon did clarify 
clarify he did not mean Tesla vehicles were going to be looking for aliens when they're sitting idle, at least not yet. I do want to reiterate, all of this is in such an early stage that drawing too many conclusions is a fool's errand. Grok itself is still in very, very early development and what it will eventually become is not yet fully known. However, thinking five to 10 years down the line, things do become incredibly interesting. You know how Siri and most voice assistants are pretty frustrating at times? Well, think about having a conversation with your car in your car being a Tesla, asking it questions and getting real-time news and answers because Grok references the entire X library of content with news in real time. This would also give Elon, Tesla, and X even more data and more of a pulse on what customers are inquiring about. Even just the idea of using Tesla's future fleet of vehicles for any type of distributed computing, whether it be Bitcoin mining or something else, those applications become intriguing, opening up a whole new world of possibility. But there's also a chance they're never really used in any meaningful way in that capacity. We do know the rest of the industry is struggling with software and the idea of smart connected autonomous vehicles. Grok running natively in Teslas could catapult Tesla even further ahead in this realm, giving customers a potentially very useful tool to use with voice commands in the future anywhere on the road. To have a built-in voice assistant with real-time data from X natively in your Tesla could bring an entirely new realm of productivity and content consumption. Could Tesla charge a monthly or annual fee for the ability to run these Grok queries? Absolutely. I could speculate here for a while, but here's my takeaway. I'm not ready to say this is a new multi-billion dollar business for Tesla, but I'm definitely not ready to write it off as hopium either. I am, however, very excited to watch this develop in the next few years because this definitely could turn into a major moat for Tesla relative to the competition. So we can absolutely go ahead and add this to the growing list of home run potential ventures for Tesla. As Grok continues to develop, we will pay close attention, but the Tesla integration natively in the next few years paired with robotaxis could become quite the selling point for the public and yes, Tesla's distribute compute capability could eventually be monetized in ways we have not yet even really thought about. What a time to be alive. Clean Technica shared a chart of the top selling EVs in Europe. This was just for one month for September of this year, but it's still fun to look at the Model Y leading the way, outselling places two through five combined. And we have VW's ID4 and ID3 combined doing less than 10,000 units for the month. I believe some of you in Europe have already seen these updates now for a few weeks, but in case you haven't, Europe is supposed to be getting some of these FSD visualizations, bringing them over to just autopilot. Those improvements like the dynamic vehicle sizing and open door visualizations should be rolling out over in the EU. We got an update on the Tesla strike situation over in Sweden. We have this source, Doggins Industry, saying the negotiations between Tesla and IF Metal have completely stalled. Now, the union is flagging for more strike action, saying there will be more sympathy measures. These sympathy strikes are where other companies not directly Tesla related may actually get involved in the strike to limit Tesla's business operations in the region. Basically as a sign of solidarity because around 90% of Sweden is unionized. What I could find online, the union believes Tesla is engaging in strike breaking. The word on the street I can't confirm is that Tesla has brought in people partly from overseas, partly from other locations in Sweden to cover for the members that are striking. So basically Tesla doing whatever they can to maintain the business operations. This is why the other unions are now saying there will be more sympathy measures. Right now, as far as I can tell, there are no more scheduled negotiation times and there are no compromises in sight. A union rep said, I don't know what that would look like. We want a collective agreement. They, Tesla, say they don't want it. When asked if Tesla had planned any countermeasures like leaving Sweden, they said, no, we have not heard of that. Tesla has 
has actually settled with a UK owner who bought a Model 3 back in 2019 and he ended up paying around 6,000 quid for FSD but he sued Tesla saying he wanted his money back because Tesla never delivered on the service. The initial settlement had clauses including a non-advice clause and a confidentiality clause but the customer wasn't having it because he wanted to be able to share his story about what happened. Tesla then agreed to remove the clauses and the case was resolved with the customer receiving the full claim amount of 5,800 quid and extra compensation of 2,200 quid, basically for the interest he could have earned over that time. So let's call this roughly 10,000 US dollars that Tesla had to pay back. There are certain locations globally where Tesla has been accepting payments for FSD, but it hasn't really delivered the service, whether it's because of a software issue or something to do with regulations. Naturally, the question becomes now that this settlement is public, will there be a lineup of other people people looking to do the same thing, get their money back from Tesla. Let's just pick a number 50,000 people that may hypothetically be in a similar situation where they paid for it and haven't got what they were expecting. That would roughly be potentially about $500 million that Tesla would then have to pay back, potentially reducing some of their FSD revenue that they're expecting to recognize in the next few years. That of course, just a quick and dirty thought experiment of what a potential worst case scenario could look like, but in the months ahead, we'll see if any of these arise. Here we have a quote over the weekend from a veteran auto analyst saying the way Toyota builds cars has been considered the standard, but it's extremely shocking to think that what Tesla is proposing is likely to become the standard for producing EVs. The impact on Japan's car manufacturing will be monumental. He was of course referring to the GigaCast method. An exec from a European automaker added, the way Tesla is making cars is quickly moving to become an industry standard. FT also shared an infographic on Tesla's older serial production process and then contrasted it with what they're looking to do with the modular or the unboxed approach. We've heard about this all before, but little things like Previously, they would have to put the doors on, then paint, then take the doors back off to go to the next step. And from a first principles approach, it was just inefficient. Compare that to what Tesla will be looking to do with the next gen platform. And they said the GigaPress castings allow floor assemblies to become part of the structure of the car, making modular units that more people or robots can work on at the same time in parallel sub assemblies. So if you want a gross oversimplification, you have all of these outside areas, we can call them pods, where you can do all of the work, do all the painting, assemble these different pods, and then you ultimately just put them together like Legos. Toyota's chief production officer said, to be honest, we are behind in giga casting since we've yet to roll out a product. But we have done casting for a long time, and ultimately we believe we can produce a product that'll be cheaper, lighter, and thinner with high performance. Yet again, we have people concerned saying that the big question will boil down to repairability when these vehicles made with a GigaCast technology are actually in accidents. However, if you've been following along daily with Electrified, you will remember we talked about Tesla's GigaCasts are actually modular in themselves. So if a certain part is actually broken or damaged, you can remove individual pieces that are actually replaceable. Yet another Tesla innovation that Legacy Auto is going to have to figure out. In summary, Tesla has gone from an irrelevant golf cart maker to literally revolutionizing the entire global auto industry not too bad. On X, Edge shared a few recent images from November of the site where Tesla is building its new diner in California. You'll see a few wall structures are indeed up. So the work is underway. I said it last time we talked about this, but I'll say it again. This site just doesn't look that big to have 32 plus stalls and this somewhat big restaurant that we were all expecting. Is it just me? This is a fun little story. We have Tesla sponsoring an engineering team at the University of Manitoba. Every year, this team builds electric race cars that are then entered into competitions. This time around, Tesla is giving them 2170 cells for them to use in their next design. But in my opinion, the coolest part of the story, Tesla will also be offering consulting services to their engineers about the design and allow them to get some Tesla expertise, which one of the students said is invaluable valuable to the team. The team said they were one of only 67 that were chosen worldwide for this Tesla sponsorship.
The word on the street is the public will also be able to buy some Tesla merch in the lobby through some vending machines. I believe this was the first day it was open to the public, so most likely over the next week or two, we get a bit more information. Tesla Chan on X shared some takeaways from a recent Tao Lin interview. We've already heard about one through three, but some news she said currently a car can come off the production line in about 30 seconds. The last time we heard this, I believe it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 seconds. 10 seconds may not sound like a whole lot, but it's actually a 25% operating efficiency improvement. Automation in the welding workshop now close to 100%. Gigacasting reduces manufacturing time from one to two hours down to three to five minutes, which doesn't even make sense. And the Megapack factory in Shanghai will indeed export to the global market. We've heard that the cost competition for battery energy storage in the Chinese market is as intense as anywhere on the planet. So it may make sense for Tesla to start exporting the Megapack to the European and other regions. And of course, as Tesla scales production for its Megapack in time with higher volume, they should be able to drive down costs and then maybe become more cost competitive in the Chinese local market. And when people ask how Tesla is actually making EVs profitably, of course, there are thousands of reasons, not the least of which is relentless continuous improvement. Kerrigan Advisors has said nearly half of the dealers that were queried indicated they have no trust in Ford and Toyota ended up as the most trustworthy brand when it comes to dealer relations. 48% of dealers said they have no trust in Ford consistent with the expectation of a decline in future Ford franchise profitability due to the OEM's EV future retailing strategy. Nissan not far behind though as they followed Ford with 43% of dealers saying they have no trust in the brand. Meanwhile, a whopping 72% percent said they have a high level of trust in Toyota. This of course begs the question though, is this a case of the blind leading the blind? To which I would say most likely it's a resounding yes. I will say you have to be careful with these numbers because obviously the dealers are not going to want to change their business model. They've been making historically high profits. Nobody wants to go and learn an entirely new vehicle, the EV. They have to spend money on charging and infrastructure and training. So naturally any OEM that tries tries to get the dealers to onboard with EVs, there's going to be some level of pushback. Just another messy situation that Tesla does not have to spend one second thinking about. According to El Economista, Tesla has established a holding company in Barcelona, Spain. You may recall that Tesla was in negotiation talks to open a $5 billion gigafactory in Spain, but then some of the details of those plans were leaked and Tesla said, nope, not doing it anymore. The reporting said the purpose of this holding company would be acquisition, holding, enjoyment, administration, direction, and management of securities and or shares of Spanish or foreign companies or entities, residents in Spain or abroad, so definitely too broad to make any real assumptions. Tesla's cooking up something in the Spanish market. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Previously, GM had about $11 billion earmarked through 2028 in US investments for electric vehicles and powertrains. Now that number over the weekend has been boosted by about $2 billion to 13. GM is expected to build a more affordable version of the Chevy Bolt in Kansas and a new series of premium EVs for Cadillac and Chevy in Michigan. GM is considering whether to build this new version of the Bolt EV at its Fairfax plant in 2025. They're also thinking about a pure electric performance model with a Corvette name. This is all still evolving as over the weekend, GM and the UAW were still working on ratifying these new contracts. But they're talking about five vehicle assembly plants and seven parts plants to build EVs and components in the United States over the next five or so years. The word is the new Chevy Bolt would fall under the master UAW contract. Lucid has finally given in today announcing that their customers will be able to access 15,000 Tesla superchargers in North America in 2025, so Lucid is adopting the NAX after all. Their current vehicles with CCS ports will be able to access the supercharger network with an adapter, but not until 2025. Questions remain how the V3 superchargers will work with Lucid and how the voltage step up is going to be handled, but I'm sure we'll find out in time. 
time. Here's the updated NAX list, remaining holdouts, VW, Stellantis, and Mazda. In response to the news, you have to love the humor from Elon saying that must have been a bitter pill to swallow. You can find me on X linked below. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.